to mark the 2018 running of the legendary Bathurst 1000, in this week's brand new episode of Hill Clan Monsters in Project Cars 2, we're taking a ride in a thunder from down under, as the Ford Falcon V8 supercar takes on a Azure Coast Hill Climb course. But with nearly 650 brake horsepower at our disposal, can this terrifying touring car spring a surprise or two? Let's go find out. What's going on guys, my name is Batidio and welcome back to Project Cars 2 and a brand new episode of Hill Climb Monsters and this week's challenger, as you can see on screen, is this, the absolutely bonkers Ford Falcon V8 supercar and the reasons for taking this car this week, as I've already mentioned, I've been waiting for this for quite a while actually because I wanted to do this episode around the running of the Bathurst 1000 and that of course happens this weekend so um, that's the reason we've gone for the uh, the Falcon uh, this week um, so let's just jump straight into it and start by taking a look at some of the stats uh, which are fairly impressive as you would imagine so uh, produced in 2013 but this car is still actually running uh, I think it's had a few improvements I think one of the ones they had for this year I think the like, carbon fiber roof I think was one of them um, but yeah so looking at the stats we've got here though um, as you know it's a rear wheel drive uh, it's got a six-speed sequential gearbox bolted to a whopping V8 engine uh, no traction control stability control ABS none of that nonsense um, it has nearly 650 brake horsepower uh can go from 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds at a top speed of 184 miles an hour and it's coming in quite on the heavy side just over 3,000 pounds there uh control difficulty is three and cornering speed is two and yeah like i said this is uh, perhaps the most bonkers touring car we have in the game. Uh, it definitely dominates the leaderboards. So we're going to look at that in a moment. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, the the practice and the setup, um, there was various problems. Uh, the first problem is I had very very snappy on handling uh, through some of the, especially through some of the off camber corners, as you would imagine, with uh, 635 brake horsepower going through the rear wheels. Um, it was always going to be a little bit. Uh, Temperamental, I suppose is the best word I could use um, around some sections of this course. Uh, the the other issues I had, uh, the braking was one, um, just trying to figure out the right balance and biases and so on, and the, and the right amount of um, a brake duct opening as well um, was a bit of a challenge, and I don't think I quite nailed it. Um, also, I mean, another problem I was encountering, and I don't think this is specific to the car. I think this may be down to my pedals, but. There will be occasions when, or where I've got my foot planted, you see the brake lights come on. Like watching the replay, you'll see the brake lights come on. So I don't know if that's an issue with my pedals, but that was a problem, and you can feel it just start to labour. And I mean, one of the things someone told me when we were driving these cars is, even through corners like mid corner, normally where you kind of sort of be coasting, ready to get on the power, you've got to be sort of blipping the throttle because it will bog down horribly. Even though it's got a lot of power, it will it does tend to bog down through some of the slower speed corners. So you've got to always be you know somewhere around about 20% on throttle pretty much through um, through the corners which again is a challenge to kind of wrap your head around when you've been doing things a certain way it's quite unique in terms of the driving of it so uh, that was a bit of a challenge again just to try and get my head around as well um but yeah i mean other bits and bobs you know fiddling around with the suspension and the dampers just to try and stop it being so snappy was a challenge um can't quite remember how I did it. Um, I didn't. I think I plateaued a little bit in terms of my knowledge and my ability to make this thing settle down. Uh, I did also play with the differential as well, just to again make it a little bit more forgiving on power delivery as well, while still keeping a, a good amount of punch, so to speak, uh, out of the corners. So um, it was a challenging car to set up. I mean, I had a decent starting point, but just fine tuning it was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated and, and finding that sweet spot. I still don't think I found it, but I got it to a point where I could push it and give it my all, basically. Um, so, yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, like I said, the practice, uh, as you would imagine, with this being a quite bonkers car, there were a few accidents here and there. Um, so, yeah, the uh, the first one we've got here, um, just like I said, it's just uh, getting on the power, just get a little bit out of shape there and... Uh, that's pretty much the end of that run. And um, then, of course, this is coming down towards uh, Fraggle Rock Corner. And again, I just clipped the barrier on the inside. And then that was all she wrote, pretty much. Spun around and uh, game over on that front. Uh, another one here. This is the Magic Roundabout. Just, uh, yeah, I think I just got a little bit too much, too wide. And I clipped the curbing 
uh, with the left rear and it just pirouetted around in, into a wall. So yeah, that was unpleasant. And then this next one, uh, I just cut in a bit too fine, hit the thingy and it just flipped. Absolutely just flipped, absolutely spectacular flip. So yeah, um, fair few accidents uh, around this course with this car. Uh, but yeah, so um, before we jump into the actual run itself, let's just take a look at the actual leaderboards. And uh, as we know, the Toyota TS050 Hybrid is still very much at the top, but I don't think this has any sort of realistic chance of beating that. Uh, the only other touring cars we've done uh, is from the, the first episode where we did the, uh, the, the Audi V8 DTM. And uh, from not long back, we did the Opel Astra TCR. The Opel Astra TCR, as you can see on this uh, leaderboard here, um, is our current best time on these uh, on these particular the, the full blown game leaderboards uh, with a 7:22.5 uh, there. Um, but if we look at the top of the leaderboards, as you can see, the top guy, uh, the the top time is held by a guy who did it in a Ford Falcon V8 supercar, and I very much rate myself on this course. I've done enough mileage around here to know all the little, the little kinks and crevices of where you can get tripped up and so on and so forth. So I think we should be aiming for the top time. So a 631.019 is what we've got to aim to beat there. So yeah, uh, we've got a chance, a genuine chance, I think, at uh, maybe going, becoming the fastest or bagging the fastest uh, time on this course in a touring car. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very, very tough, but I definitely think we've got a chance. But uh, yeah, so uh, what we're going to do now, though, is we are going to head down to the track and we're going to see how myself and the Ford Falcon V8 supercar get on on our best run. Here we go then, guys. Ford Falcon V8 supercar on our Azure Coast Hill Climb course. And as we come down to this first corner, um, this was uh, it's a tricky corner in any car, but in this one, we get it just about right there. But uh, through the center S's now, you can, we've seen how wrong you can get it and uh, it can lead to some very, very sizable accidents. But coming down to here, a bit of a lock up and another one there. Uh, that was the problem. I just couldn't really, as much as I tried, I just couldn't really find the sweet spot with the braking where it wasn't going to lock the, uh, the front wheels up every time you touch the brakes. And, uh, as I said, I was having issues at certain times where the car was labouring and uh, afterwards when I looked at other replays, you can see that occasionally the brake lights come on, but if you fly through the magic roundabout, one of the fastest cars we've had through there, and then we're going to tag that, uh, that, <laughs> that traffic sign there. It doesn't seem to damage the car. Normally it sends the steering all off and skew with, but we make it through and uh, onto the, uh, the happy highway now. And again, that was a tricky corner as well because... There's a, there's a real pronounced bump at the apex that it can really, you can break traction very easily and if you get up the power a little bit too soon then you're going to be pirouetting around it into a wall or uh, just clearing out all those cones. But um, now a little bit of a chance to have maybe a little bit of a breather as we come down towards uh, traffic cone corner and uh, one of the more important corners on there. We're going to use every little bit of the racetrack that we can. A little bit of a wobble there. We took a little bit of the curbing on the inside but we make it through and now we're coming down uh, towards Stonewall Corner and um, yeah I mean it wasn't too bad through here um, there were occasions where you just maybe give it a bit too much speed and you run wide and once this thing sort of gets wide it's very hard to drag back and uh, and not lose time basically but uh, as we come through to this corner here this was the toughest corner on the course I had so many accidents here because it's a little bit off camber on the exit it just you can just very easily spin up the rears and uh, find yourself pointing in the wrong direction and again through here Ice Cream Cove just giving it absolutely everything I can in order to uh, keep us in a good stead to potentially beat that uh, that current record time of a 6.31.0. Uh, as we come through now, uh, Cobra Pass, again, this was uh, another tricky section. Again, getting this car, it's a little bit sluggish through the uh, the, the high-speed changes of, of direction. So uh, you do have to be a little bit careful, a little bit wary now. Uh, as we come down to James Bay Corner, you can see just how much we've lit up the front tyres really starting to wear them out and they're starting to overheat a little bit so like I said finding the sweet spot with the braking was really difficult but as we now come towards the end of sector number one we've actually uh, we have improved this was our best run through that first sector there uh, but as we come up the hill now and into Silver Spoon Village again got to be careful through here uh, lots of opportunities for the car just to to get uh, airborne and uh, if you if the steering angle isn't exactly right on the landing, then you're going to just spin up those rears. You're going to be facing the wrong direction or even worse. So, yeah, we've got to be careful through there. Uh, on to outrun now and again. We've seen we've had accidents through here. You've got to cut it as fine as you possibly can without clipping those barriers. Get it down to fourth gear. Get the nose in and get back on the power again. And I think if you look at the uh, the replay at the bottom right of the corner, you'll see just 
uh, worry about oh it didn't, it didn't happen then um, <laughs> there's, there's little areas where it just it dabs the brakes for some reason I'm not quite sure where I know it was somewhere on this run it did it because I've seen the replay but as we come to the uh, the uh, entry of the Mongo McRae Hill Complex we're going to get a little bit out of shape just there that maybe cost us a little bit of time so that's not going to help our cause in beating this top time over the jumps and then back on the brakes uh, coming down into this very tight uh, left-hander and again you can see the the front tire is just getting lighted up it just it's so easy to lock the brakes in this thing so like i said I've, I've played so much around with the braking to try and find that sweet spot and i just don't think i've, I've managed to get it just yet but again another second gear um tight corner the left the right handed out as we come up towards uh the camel straight now and we're going to take uh, the first hump just here not too bad. You don't have to be careful through the second one because if you dab the brakes, then it will just go nose down and you'll be heading towards a very, very big accident. And as we come through Mirage, well, you can see we just get a little bit out of shape. They have to get out the throttle down to second gear from the second of the Mirage corners. And we definitely lost time there. If we didn't do the uh, the entry of the Mongo McRae complex, then we definitely did there. But down the Pogo stick straight now. Pretty good down here. Again, getting on the brakes. A uh, bit of a lock up once again. And away we go. And uh, it was uh, it was the second sector where I knew I could find time. And one of my runs, I was actually going about three tenths faster than the best time. But um, on this one, like I said, we've made a couple of errors there. So I don't know whether we're still going to be able to do that. But as we come down onto the uh, the tunnel now and the, the Great Ocean Highway, which start, uh, begins the, the final sector, this is our best run through that corner. As we come down towards the, what would be there, the end of sector two, and through this uh, sweeping left-hander and down towards... Um, another very very fast section of this course and like I said the first sector was a tough one the second sector where I knew I could probably find time and I still probably could find time but with the nature of the series being only you know me only having two hours of setup time and an hour's worth of time runs then you do pretty much have to be on it from the very very start but as we come down here now again you can just see how it just wobbles you get those fronts off the uh, off the ground and it's very very easy to uh, put this thing into a big accident having to uh, feather the throttle there in order to get through as we come down towards uh, Deception. Don't quite get it where I want it after maybe scrub off a little bit too much speed there. Uh, but we're away again. Uh, you can just again see those uh, those front tyres taking an absolute battering at the moment. Uh, down into fourth gear as we come through sweeps now. And again, just feeling like it's labouring maybe just a little bit. Like I said, the replay doesn't show you the, uh, the, the rear lights. Um, as I said, sometimes it just they, they just come on. It might be down here where I noticed it. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know where it was, but it definitely... I think there's something going on with my pedals or there's something wrong with this car. Like I said, um, through the corners, especially approaching like sort of the mid-corner after the exit, you do have to sort of start feathering the throttle a little bit and keeping that power in, uh, even if it's just a small amount. But again, you can just see how much of a pounding that, that front left is taking now as we come down towards the last corner now, down into third gear, get the nose in, running a little bit wide, keep it out of the wall though, and I run down to the line. And it's going to be a time of 6 minutes, 32.2. So, unfortunately, as much as we tried, as hard as we tried, we couldn't get that top time. Really disappointed. Like I said, I give it absolutely everything. I did lose about two tenths compared to my best in that middle sector. Uh, but I went personal best through the first and second sector. But I'm actually going to show you how far back I am on the actual... Um, the top time um, sector for sector so um, as we can see um, personal best in the first sector 31 2 but I'm still a full-blown second off the world record there uh, my current best through the um, the middle sector is a 24 uh, 24 2 basically but um, I managed only a 24 8 through there so there's definitely more time to find through there um, I reckon I could at least I could probably do a mid 23 maybe even a low 23 high 22 through that middle sector but made a couple of errors uh, this was pretty much our last run so it wasn't any opportunity and you've got to be absolutely dialed in for this and again we went personal best through the um, through the the final sector we actually were about four tenths faster through the um, through the final sector than the world record time so it's definitely there to find but like i said unfortunately it's only going to get his um what turns out to be basically uh second place on the leaderboards unfortunately so um to the guy who's in top spot uh barra rs2k 
congratulations. It's, it's an immense time. It really is. It's going to take some beating. If I could find more time to do that first sector, I don't know where I'd find it, but if I could find more time to do that first sector and nail the second sector, I definitely think I could beat that time, but it would take... Uh, an absolutely alien-esque lap from myself and i don't know whether i've got it uh, <laughs> i don't know if i've got it in me but um there we go guys and in terms of our hill climb monsters leaderboard the uh the ford falcon v8 supercar goes seventh so it's actually faster than the ferrari fxxk and the ford gtlm from last week and it's only three tenths of a second slower than the ferrari f50 gt so this car is not playing around it's an absolute monster it's a real beast and if you can nail the setup better than I can, and if I could nail the setup, I think I could definitely beat that top time and maybe even beat the Ferrari and, and get top time on the leaderboards. But alas, this time out, we have to set off for second place. Um, but there we go, guys. So uh, that's the end of today's episode. So uh, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy this, we want to see more Project Cars 2 or just general racing content from myself, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure you ring that bell as well so you get a notification for all my new videos. Uh, also, if you have suggestions for cars you'd like to be driving this series, I'm always happy to take your feedback on board. So if you have something, you you know, a car that I haven't done yet, that's a personal favourite of yours, and you want to see me drive it on this course in this series, leave a comment down below. Uh, uh, always happy to hear from you guys. Uh, but again, guys, thank you everybody so much for watching. Stay cool. And as always, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.